Hey, hey, good morning, good morning, good morning, good people. How are you guys doing? Come on, welcome to the drawing board. Come on, hopefully you got hopefully you got seven or eight hours of sleep for all of my, my Zoom family. If you're if you're on YouTube and you're you're going to be watching this later at Wednesday at, at 7 p.m., you're you're good on sleep. But come on, shout out to all of my my good morning, my good folks, my Zoom 7 a.m. folks. But um Thank you guys so much for joining us for the drawing board this morning. Uh, I, I, I'm praying. Hopefully you you've been encouraged. You've been um, your faith has been increased. Come on. Come on. If you can just type in a chat for me. Are you back in the gym? That's that's all I want to know. If, you, if this is your first week, you're probably like, hey, why? Why Pastor Anthony's calling me out? No, nah, I haven't been to the gym. No, this this is what we've been saying for all of the folks just to catch you up. Um, getting back in the gym is not just physically, but being spiritually fit in this season. This is what the drawing board is all about. It is about us getting back to the gym. Come on, somebody. Just, just touch your six-pack abs right now. Come on. I know you got six-packs, eight-packs. eight, eight, eight packs. Just, just touch your abs. It's all about the core. That's what, that's what the core area is, even in our physical body, but also for our spiritual body, our core area. How is your core area in this season of your life? I love in, in episode one, we, we laid out the foundation blocks. Come on, somebody. We, we begin to say fountain first Timothy. We, we begin to say, hey, it's great to go to the gym, but it's more. This is what Paul was saying. It's even better to make sure your spiritual man is as your inner man, your core being is in tip top shape for the season of life that you're in right now. That's why you're committed. That's why you're waking up. And maybe you're you're still in, in your PJs right now or you're way in, in, into work. Why? Because this is a top priority in your life. Is to continue to create rhythms, routines, disciplines in your life to always put God first. And here it is. And always to make space for God to be God. Oh, I believe that. If we allow God to be God in our life, he will always reign in our life. But he's such a gentleman. He always, he's inviting. He wants you to create space for him to be the God in your life. So the, the spiritual disciplines that we have in our life, here's what it does. It allows God to do just that. It allows, we're, we're saying these three things for the drawing board. Here's what we're committing to. We want to be better in this season. You want to draw closer to God in this season. You actually want not just to be better, not just to draw closer, but you also want to have a great understanding of getting stronger in Christ. That comes through a healthy discipline. So as we're going through each week, we're, we're unpacking these different spiritual disciplines and we're, we're calling them spiritual exercise. How's your exercise working for you in this season of your life? Last, last Monday, we, we began to unpack prayer a little bit, but I'm, 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 I'm loving this morning because we're going to be tackling worship. I love this saying. This saying says this. It says that, that worship, if you... If you're looking for God, come on, somebody. If you're looking for God, begin to worship and God will find you. God is always seeking worship. He's always looking for who is worshiping, who's glowing, fine. If you're in a season of your life right now where you are not hearing the voice of God, you're not seeing the activity of God, like, God, where are you? I'm thirsty for more of you. I always ask myself, begin to worship and God will show up. He, he, he's, he's always looking to soak up our worship, not if as though he needs our worship, but he is so in a position of his life where he's always looking to grab more from us. He wants to be close to us. He wants, he has a desire always constant to be close to you. So when you begin to worship, God shows up. Matter of fact, he's omnipresent. When you begin to worship, he's already there. Worship is not really for, you, for God. Worship is really for us so that we can know that God is always in the midst with us. Come on, somebody, 7 a.m. this morning, God is right there with you. 
When you begin to worship, it begins to remove. I, I just always see walls begin to move. Distraction of the noise begin to move. It begins to give me a clear runway of just understanding, God, you're right here. You're right here with me. But I want to unpack this at an angle this morning for us, family, as we begin to dive a little bit deeper, because we, we all understand what I'm saying this morning. That's, that's not... That's not why we're here. We, we understand the why behind the worship. To be honest, there's another struggle when it comes to worship. See, see, I remember even, I remember even when, when uh, me and Brenda, we took a trip out, out of the country uh, to for a vacation. And I remember I was talking to one of the locals and this had really nothing to do with worship, but it, it dawned on me even about my own life. I began to have a conversation with the local and the local began to say, he said, I said, where, he asked me, where are you from? I said, USA, well, I'm, I'm, I'm from um, the, the Americas. And he said, oh, the American, that's a, that's a beautiful place. But then he began to say, you, you guys are so busy. You, you, you guys are just so busy. You, you busy body, busy body. You're always doing something. And he said, you have to enjoy life. You have to, you have to enjoy life. And he was really just, really just saying, slating it to stop pausing and enjoying life. But to be honest, when he said something, it, it hit me in my spiritual core. Because we can become so busy in life where we can miss our moments of pausing and worshiping our God in the now moment. See, I love this saying. It says, when the enemy cannot make you bad, he will actually make you busy. He, he, he wants to get it. He can't control you anymore. You have a you have a connection with God. Those things that you used to do probably years ago. He understands he can't do that anymore, but he doesn't. He's not looking to make you bad. He's just looking to make you busy because if he can make you busy, he can get you off the, the point, the spot, the spot, excuse me, the spot where God wants you. See, here in America, where I wrote this down, we, we, and when I was talking to the local, we, we had such, I was like, man, we have such a reputation of just being overworked, such a reputation of being overstressed, such a reputation of, of just being overwhelmed with responsibilities of life. We live right, if you, I know we have other people that's on a call from other parts of the country, but we all know even right here in the DMV, I'm, I'm a Washingtonian. This is, it's in my blood, just ambition, busyness. I didn't grow up in a, a slow paced environment since I came out of the mother's womb. It feels like I've been running. Even now when I connect with people, the older I get, Hey, what do you do? It's all about status. And what are you doing next? And that the rate, the rat race and you're running. And before you know it, you're not learning how to create rhythms in your life to just pause and reflect on who your God is. Learning how to pause and reflect on who your God is. See, this is the beauty of, of this is the beauty of making sure that we create these rhythms because we don't want to have a reputation of just being busy and missing the mark with God. See, see, scripture teaches us this, family. Scripture teaches us that worship is important to God. I, I love that Cain and Abel offer sacrifice of worship. We understand that God only accepted one. We, we, we can read about Noah who built the ark. And then after, after the water and after he exit out the, um, after the floods, after he exit out, out of the ark, what did Noah do? Noah worship. I love that Moses even told Pharaoh, I'm, I'm kind of laughing right now because even I'm thinking about the Ten Commandments movie. Y'all remember the Ten Commandments black and white movie when, Mo, when God said, let my people, I don't let my people go. I'm sorry, 7 a.m. I apologize, guys. But matter of fact, did the Ten Commandments movie come on this Easter? Anybody? Just put that in the chat. Let me know. Like that is like if they didn't do that. Shame on whatever network that's supposed to run that uh, every Easter. But Moses said to Pharaoh, let my people go. For what reason? So that they can worship their God alone. 
so that they can, it was all about worship, uh, the whole plan to get, to get Israel underneath the hand of Egypt is so that they will no longer be a slave to another God, but they were actually to another kingdom. So they can actually worship God alone. Worship is important to, to, to God. Matter of fact, talking about Moses, when, 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 when God and Moses went up on the mountain, talking about the 10 commandments, what was the first commandment that God gave Moses? He said, don't, he said this, he said, you should not worship no other God, no other God before me. Do not put anything before me because I want to be number one in your life. Throughout Genesis, going into the New Testament, we see that worship is important to God. If worship is important to God, worship has to be important to us. Worship has to be important, but just like I set this up, I want to set it up because we all understand this, but we have the struggle of dealing with life and also pausing to understand that worship is important. And in other words, if I can say it like this, that there's two hands, you, you got to learn how to honor God in one hand and handle life in the other hand. So life, this hand always seems heavy because you have responsibilities. You have the time. It seems like it's not on your hand. Come on, anybody, 24 hours just doesn't seem like it's enough. You need, you need some more hours. And you also got a good understanding in this hand that I must honor God through worship. How do we balance both in a world that's always pulling on us? How do we balance that when, when we're living in a world where it's always saying that it, this hand is just so heavy, this hand is just so full, this hand always has something from work and kids and life and responsibilities and we, we're called to be adults, we got some business to take care of, we, we all understand that, but we, you also got a good understanding that, wow, God, I must put you first in my life. I'm learning this more. I, mean, I was having a conversation with, with um, Pastor Brenda. You guys know my wife, Pastor Brenda, my beautiful bride. Good morning, babe. <laughs> you, and we were having a conversation, and I'm, I'm praying this even for my life. I'm praying it for your life, that in this season of your life, time does not dictate you. You dictate time. Come on, somebody. That time does not tell you where to go. You tell time where to go. Being in control of your schedule, here it is, allows you to be in position to learn how to pause and worship your God. See, when we're not in control or we're not stored in our time properly, we will always feel as though we don't have enough time to learn how to pause and reflect and worship our God. So now you're just chasing the clock and you're trying to catch up and life goes on and you say, maybe I'll get back at it another day and another day turns into another week and another week turns into another month. And before you know it, we all can be in a season where we just feel out of alignment because we're not sitting at the father's feet and worshiping him. Everything you need is found at the father's feet. The very thing that you're chasing and the source of what you need in order to complete that is found at the Father's feet when we worship. So we have to learn how to pause and reflect and worship. But I want to I want to show you what I'm what I'm talking about of juggling, honoring God, pausing, but also handling responsibilities in your life. We all know this the scripture. If you if you've got your Bible, you can turn to Luke ten. 38. And I'm, I'm going to read, this is about um, Murray and Martha. And we, we, we this is a, a very well-known scripture. And it says this in Luke 10, 38, it says, while they were traveling, he entered a village and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Murray who also sat at the Lord's feet and was listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. Come on. And she came up and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has, le has left me to serve alone? Come on. <laughs> so tell her to give me a hand. The Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, 
You are worried and upset about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mark Murray has made the right choice and it will not be taken away from her. Martha here allowed the work for the Lord to distract her from the Lord's work. Martha was, but with Martha, she was, she was wanting, here's the beauty in it. There's nothing really wrong with what Martha did, but there was something beautiful of actually what Murray did. See, 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 what, when, I, when I look at this scripture and, it, and where it begins to paint a picture, I, I see my own self in the position of Mary and Martha. Is that we live in a Martha's world carrying the understanding that we need to be a Mary. I wrote it down like this. The challenge we face every day is how do we become a Mary in a Martha's world? How do we become a Murray in a Martha's world? Martha had responsibilities of serving and completing a task. We all can agree to that. Jesus comes into the house. She has her to-do list. She has an understanding of if I complete this, this is how I get my validation. This is how I complete my task. This is how I see my, my, my self-worth. My self-worth is to serve you. We, we can all be in this position that Martha is in right now of completing the task. And can I say this even like this? She was serving Jesus. You're calling it's to serve Jesus. This season of your life right now serves Jesus. When you go to your job, you are serving Jesus. That business that you have right now, guess what? You're serving Jesus. The mission that's in your life for this season, whether you know it or not, you are serving Jesus. Make sure the very thing that you're serving is always lifting up Jesus in some type of way. That's what your calling is. You may not feel as though you're in your, you, you may not feel as though that you may not be in your calling. Guess what? God can take this season. Why? Because nothing's wasted and he can use that to lift his kingdom up. You So you can serve through that but watch, watch this. There was something different about Martha and Murray. Murray had an understanding that this moment right here is a moment I may never get again. That's worship. That, that, that when the Lord of Lord shows up, I, I understand I got a calling. I understand I got some responsibilities to take care. But understanding and learning how to pause, my gosh, and talk to the Father. In this case, talk to the Son. Why? Because we have to learn how to pause in our life. My gosh. That, I, I'm telling you, fam, I, I, I can't lean into that so in, into that much better. I, I wish I can give you like some some big old doctoral you sort of word to go along with it. But I'm saying it is an art for life. If we can learn how to pause in our day. At seven o'clock, you're pausing. At, at, at noontime, you're pausing. On the way to, on the way you're driving in, you're you're pausing, you're you're creating a, a habit and a routine. And I'm saying it this way: you're you're in that flow, you're in the gym. Learn how to pause. Don't be so busy taking care of the duties, the responsibilities. Let yes, those are important, but what's more important in your life right now is having your moment with your Savior. Had, learning how to pause and reflect. I say it this way, in order for you to live, love, and be like Jesus, we need to do what Jesus did. When we look through all of the gospels, we talked about this in the first two episodes, that Jesus always created space to get away to pause. This is Jesus, fully man and fully God. In his divine nature, my gosh, Jesus even understood that for me to complete the task that's at hand, for me to actually fulfill the Father's request, I have to make sure I stay close to the Father, even when I'm pouring out to others. 
I have to make sure that I'm still close to the father so that I can complete the task that is at hand. When we're feeling overstressed and overwhelmed, I always ask myself, am I close to the father? And because if I'm close to the father, the very thing that's releasing out of me, the father will replenish me. Jesus himself created ways to always withdraw and get away. Watch this. If you in Matthew 14, verse 22, Matthew 14, 22, it says this. It says, immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowd, after dismissing the crowd, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Well into the night, he was there alone. Jesus stepped away from the busyness. Jesus stepped away from the disciples. That's the task and hand to, to teach them and, and have a model for them to walk out. He, he stepped away even from them. He removed himself from the crowd so that he can go up on the mountain and do what? Worship. How are you removing yourself from the crowd throughout your day? Because we, we, we have, we, we have the, the, the Martha's responsibilities, but we have to learn how to be a Murray in a Martha's world. Understanding that the, the, the responsibilities will get taken care, but the first priority that's in your life right now is to make sure that you maximize the moments with your Savior of creating the responsibility. So when you wake up, God gets your first words. Before your feet touch the floor, God is getting your first, your thoughts. The first five, 10, 15 minutes. If you have to, if you have to wake up 15 minutes earlier, come on, if you got some kids, you got to beat them up and sometimes they can wake up. But before mommy and daddy mode kick in, before leader mode kicks in, before any hat that you're going to wear in this day, I'm saying this to my own self, make sure you put on a hat of being a son of God. I mean, being a man of God, not the son of God. I'm sorry. <laughs> that hit me in my core. Make sure that you be a man of God or a woman of God. You are, I'm, I want to say this, but you are a son in the kingdom. You are a daughter in the kingdom. Before you wear any other hat, hear this, please. Hey, before you wear any other hat, make sure you wear the hat of being a son. Wear the hat of being a daughter. Before you put on any other responsibility, before anybody else gets your attention, your thoughts, your wisdom, your leadership, regardless. Why? Because you're going to be drained, and I want to make sure that I'm sitting with the fathers first because the very thing that I need to be replenished in me, I got to get from the source. That's what worship does. Worship matters to God. Worship matters to God. This is why even for being here in the office and we're going to have meetings later on. And, and that's why I got to I got to stay before God so that I can hear from God and I can lead at the level that Jesus wants me to lead to. But then I, I know once I have meetings, I'm, a, I'm, I'm it begins to go out of me. I'm feeling drained. I have to get back before the father. Same thing for you. Come on, somebody. Say you have to find moments in your day to get along and spend five minutes with them, 10 minutes with them. It's not legalistic. You may, you may not have the opportunity to give, to give God 30 minutes during the middle of your day, but God is saying, can I get one? Come on. Can, 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 can I get one or two, three minutes? Can, can, I just want, because what you need, the father saying, I have it. And I just want you, I, I'll release it to you. I'll release the very thing that you need. Just, just give me one minute. And that's what we do. We create, my gosh, we create flows in our life to pause. And I'm saying it again. I can feel it right now. We control out your time. Speak that over your life. That is for somebody. I know it ain't just for me. You are in control of your time. Why? Because the creator, you are connected to the creator. The creator controls time. Time does not control you. I'm even, I'm even rebuking the words that come out of my mouth. Man, it's just not enough time in a day. 
I have this to do. I got this to do. I got responsibilities to take care. No, no, no. And here's what God is saying. No, you control time. If you steward your time well to handle the responsibilities, but those responsibilities are centered around, it flows around worship. And as long as worship is at the center, worship will control. Worship will show you where the responsibility needs to get taken. Worship will give you the the revelation and the wisdom that you need. If you're feeling that you're juggling too much in this season, I ask myself, is it centered on worship? Is worship at the core? See, a good question to ask yourself right now, and we talked a little bit about this even even yesterday in the message on this past Sunday, if you you haven't had a chance to hear it yet, of, of, of understanding the difference between why power and willpower. See, 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 willpower will run out. Man, man, even talking about being in the gym and I was raised to be an athlete, like, I, 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 I can commend myself. Like I have great willpower. I would just will myself through it. Or oh, it's a task of, like, no, I'm going to work hard. Nobody's going to outwork me. And that's, that's how I was raised in my father's household. Have a, I believe I have a great work ethic because of my father. Like I, I have tremendous willpower. But what I'm learning more and more of walking with God is really not about willpower because willpower will eventually run out. Willpower is, is not replenished by God. Willpower, it just, it, that comes directly just from you. I don't want to be connected to willpower. I want to be connected to why power. See, see, why power replenished from God? Understanding the why behind something always leads you into a place where even when you're feeling overwhelmed, stressed, don't feel as though that you have enough. If you understand the why behind it, the why will always lead you to more. Why does worship matter? That's the question. Why you have to ask yourself, why, why does worship matter to me so much? Why does worship matter to God so much? See, see, we just don't want to. We just don't want to worship God because he commanded us. We want to also worship God because we understand the why. You understand that you cannot be the best version that God has created you to be without worship. You understand that you understand that the very thing that God has called you to do, you can't do it without worship. You can't be a great mom without worship. Can't be a great father without worship. You can't be a great, a, a great leader with the very calling that's in your life. You can't be the best version to lead and love like Jesus without worship. See, the beauty thing about worship, what I love about worship, and I, I read this, that, that worship is simply this. Beautiful definition I read in a book, that worship is, is actually giving God back his breath. Whew. Worship is giving God back his breath. That God first breathed on us, even back in Genesis, he breathed on Adam. Matter of fact, in the, in the, in the, in the Gospels, in the, in, um, in the upper room, he, he came back, he breathed on the, he, he, with the Holy Spirit, he breathed on us. He's breathing on you. And when we worship, because he's worthy, he's worth it. So this is why we worship. So when we worship, we're, we're literally giving God back the breath that he breathes into us daily. Man, inhale, exhale. If you inhale too long, the very thing that's going in will actually, it, 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 will, it will act, to be honest, it will actually kill you. So, so understand, understand the analogy that, that, that I'm saying here, that we're created to inhale and exhale. The very thing that, the very way that God created us, when he molded and touched you, he created us to live a life of inhaling and exhaling. He did not create, he did not create us to... Mm-mm. So, so when you're feeling tight, and, 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 when, and when you're feeling as though you're frustrated or you're confused or you're out of pocket, you're just out of rhythm, I ask myself, am I exhaling in this season? Whew. 
Am I exhaling? I got to create a rhythm in my life to make sure I'm always exhaling with God. Inhale. Exhale. Constant throughout my day. Breathing in, making sure that I have an intentional posture of, of, of inhaling his breath and exhaling his breath. Why? That's worship. Worship your God. In your car, worship, exhale. Uh, at, at your job, exhale. When you're around your family and friends, hear me, exhale. Inhale what he's doing and exhale it back to him. Let him know how much you appreciate his breath. You are the breath we breathe. You are the air we breathe. We need you to continue to breathe on us because we need your breath. Worship is a spiritual discipline. I wrote this down that it, it, it requires intentional engagement. But the beauty, as we get ready to, to close it down, the beauty of, of worship is this, is that we, we need both. We need private worship, but then we also need corporate worship. You can't just go off the off the uh, off of just having private worship in your life. Why? Because God created us to be in the family. And the way, the same way that he created you to inhale and exhale, he also created us to actually link arms with other people and walk along with them so that we can continue to inhale and exhale. Hebrews 10, 25 says, says it this way. Hebrews 10, 25. It says, not neglecting to gather together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging each other, encouraging each other. We are here to encourage one another. In other words, come on, it's, it's almost summertime. I'm, I'm getting, I, I, can, I can smell some good barbecue on, on the grill. Come on, my, my good brother Julius. Come on, I know we got a man night gonna come up and we just gonna barbecue. We gonna, we gonna eat some, some good food. But when we are barbecuing, in order for the coal to stay lit, it has to be connected to another coal. If that coal begins to, to, to lose its steam, all it has to do is make sure that it's connected to another coal that's already lit so that it can stay on fire for its purpose to burn. It was created to burn. So I ask myself, if I'm running low on steam, if I'm running low on being on fire, am I connected back to the coal? See, I see what the pandemic has showed us is that we, have, we can always get creative of making sure that we have corporate worship. So even for some come to in-person gatherings, I love it. If you haven't been to one of our in-person gatherings, like I, I just, I, I highly recommend that you, that you come on out and join us for worship. But if, hey, maybe you can't, and there's great reasons of maybe you can't in this season, but we have online, we have small groups, we have community groups for, for small classes, for teaching, creating a rhythm in your life of making sure that you're connected to another code. Why? That's the why. Because I understand I have to stay on fire for God. If I want to live in love like Jesus, I got to be connected to another code. This is the why in your life. It's just not about private worship. During the week, who are, what's another code in your life? Matter of fact, if I can say it this way, if you're taking notes, I want you to write down some questions for for just some reflections throughout the week for the, for, for the drawing board. And here's a great question I'm even asking myself today. What will you do tomorrow to improve your worship core? What will you do tomorrow to improve your worship core? See, when you're going to the gym, the trainer has a plan. Matter of fact, you might do some curls one week, you might... You might do, you might, you know, do some bench press, then you work on the shoulders, then you work on the lower body. Like your trainer has different exercise so that you can improve the very area that you're looking to improve. But the trainer is just not telling you. The trainer actually is creating a plan in your life so that you can actually see the results that you want to see. See, in order to get the results that you want to see, we always have to, that's the habaka. You, you have to create a plan, a vision, so even for your spiritual core or even for this exercise, worship 
How are you creating a plan to draw closer to God in this season? See, I wrote down, create a worship plan that includes a daily concentrated moment with God. That goes back to, to Murray. It goes back to Murray. That Murray had, it was in our plan. You know what? I'm going to maximize this moment to have a, I said it this way, a concentrated moment. That means I'm not focused on anything else. So you see, you got to you gotta plan these moments. You got to set up appointments with God. Look, God, I'm going to lock you in right here. I got a whole lot of stuff. I'm going to lock. It's great. I love on my way to work, on the way into the office. I had my moments with God. And that's, that's beautiful. Like, please do that. Have your moments whenever you can. But I also believe in having concentrated moments where I'm not focused on anything else but him. I want to let God know, God, you know everything that's on, on your list, on, on your list for today. God knows that. And God is saying, I admire you so much for making time for me. Pause and have a concentrated moment with God. Even when it comes to worship, here's another great one. Perhaps getting an accountability partner to worship with. Who's your, who's your gym partner in this season? See, when, when you go to the gym, you got a spider. When you go to the gym, you got somebody who can, who's, right, who's right in there with you. They're, they're working out with you. So who, who's in the gym with you? Maybe it's your spouse, a friend, pastor, another leader. Well, whoever it is, like, don't be in the gym by yourself. Like, like, who can you lean on in this season to actually be in the gym with you? That goes back to the analogy of, of having another coal in your life, somebody that can help you stay on fire for the things of God, have an accountability partner to keep you accountable of when your spiritual core is not tight as it needs to be. They can check on you and say, hey, how was your worship today? Hey, come on, did, did you get it in? Come on, we, we talked about on week one, episode one, about the thirsty 30. Come on, 10 minutes of worship, 10 minutes of prayer. 10 minutes of a scripture engagement. Come on, you can give God 30. They're checking in on you. Come on, these are your close Christian friends and they're checking in on you and they're saying, come on, did you give God 30 today? Did God get your first words today? Accountability partners keep me on fire for God. We all ride roller coasters in our life. Nobody is sitting up here at all times. We go through some roller coasters. Thank God for some great accountability partners that's with me even in the dip because they encourage me to get back to the top. And then if I take another dip, they're right there with me. No, no, we're going we're, we're gonna to ride this roller coaster back up to the top. That's what an accountability partner does. That's what this drawing board is all about is so that we can rediscover our passion in Christ and not just stay in the dip, but ride the dip right back up to the top. That's the beauty of this. That's what it's all about. As I get ready to close, I wrote this down. No matter where you are on the worship spectrum, Jesus is calling each of us to intensify our worship so we can strengthen our core. I say it this way. Ask yourself this week, with God, in prayer, in worship, how can I get better? How can I get better? How can I increase my time with you? Hey, maybe you only come to in person one time a month. You know what, God, I'm, I'm, I'm bumping that up to two. Maybe I only watch worship one time a month. I'm going to two. Maybe I never, I mean, maybe I just go to worship um, I'm in person or, or online. You know what, God? I want to be connected to small groups. Like, like, what's the next? That's all I'm speaking to. Come on, we're, we're getting better in this season. Push yourself to the next limit. Push yourself to the next. What can you do better in this season? Man, God, I got, I'm looking. I know you're right there. I want to go to the next. That's the beauty. God is calling us, always calling us out to more. I want you to come to more. And that's the beauty. And I want, I want to pray for you as we get ready 
to close down for, for episode three of the Drawing the Board. So hopefully you've been encouraged. As we say this, I want you guys to remember this. Here's worship. Here's our definition. Worship is returning God's breath back to him. Let's do that today. Exhale back to God. Father God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for these moments this morning. As even for this third week of being at the drawing board, come on, God, we're, we're rediscovering our passion in you. Our identity is found in you. Everything who we are is found in you. Even in this season, Lord God, we, we want to learn how to even worship you better. Teach us how to love you, how you want to be loved, how you want to be worshipped. That for each person that's on this call and even for each person that's going to be watching later on YouTube, Father God, you have created each and every one of us unique in our own rightful place as our own child, Father. We, 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 we're, we, you see us as just as one. So when I worship, you see me. When somebody else worships, you see them that we're so unique, Lord God. So even our personal relationship with you Teach us how to worship you and love you. Teach us how to strengthen our core in this season so that we can be the best version that you called us to be. Man, God, you're calling us to more. In order to do more, we want more of you. In order to touch greater, we want to touch greatness first, and that greatness is found in you. In order to do all of that, we draw closer to you in this season of our life. We love you so much. It is in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.